Hey, how's it going, dirty sulfurs? Today, as promised, I'm going to show you how you can make a DIY smoke machine, which we're going to use to try to find a vacuum leak on this 2003 Ford F-150 with a 4.2 liter V6 engine. All right, so the first thing we'll need is going to be an empty one gallon paint can. Now, you might already have one of these, but if you don't and want to buy it online, I put links to this and anything else I use in this video in order to make this smoke machine in the description box down below. What you want to do next is to grab yourself a half inch drill bit and then using your drill you want to make two holes directly across on the lid. If you go without saying you want to go straight down and also hang on tight to this can otherwise it's going to spin around your drill bit. And next, we just dump out the metal shavings. Next, if it's uneven on the bottom of the lid, you just want to get yourself one of these and just do a little uh, cleaning so you have an even surface. Next, you want to get yourself two of these quick connect plugs with a male end and then get some black RTV silicone on the threads. And then you want to gently start screwing these in. And you can use a 14 millimeter socket for this. And you don't need to put a whole lot of torque, just tight is fine. And the same thing for the other side. All right, so here's a look at the bottom of the lid. I went and added some RTV silicone to this end as well. Now I don't have the correct size nuts, but ideally you want to get some washers and nuts and put over these and tighten them down. That way they don't move. Now hopefully these will stay in place, but if I end up having a leak here, I'll just make it run to the parts store. All right, next I'm going to attach this minor hose to one of these guys. And this is going to be our exhaust side or the side that takes the smoke out of this and into the intake manifold. And I'm using some 3.8 vinyl tubing. Again, link in the description box. Now let's see if we can do this without knocking loose our fitting. All right, success. All right, next we'll grab our air compressor and we're gonna do a test run. See, the pressurized air with the smoke that's coming out of this cannot be more than two PSI. Otherwise, it might damage a vacuum line and create a leak where there was none before you started. So we go to our air compressor and turn our dial all the way down, relieve all the pressure, and then slowly start turning this until we hear some air coming out of this. Now this is again one of those plugs that I've just put in here so that air can pass through this freely. That way I can tell when air is starting to come out. Now we're gonna have to do this by feel because our gauge is not gonna be accurate at two PSI. There you go, you guys hear that? All right, next we come over to our can, stick this in here. Then we'll check the flow at this end and there's hardly anything out. So we're just gonna go over to the compressor and slowly start turning it up. Did I tap in this lid? It did not. See if you guys can hear it. You can also use some soapy water to check for leaks as well. All right, so as you can see, we got a little bit of leaks coming from these, but they're not huge leaks. Uh, we should be able to still do our smoke test. Next, you want to go over to your car and decide where you're going to connect the exhaust hose uh, from your smoke machine. A uh, very common place is to connect it to where the, the, in, the vacuum hose for your power brake booster goes to your intake manifold, especially since in our case, it's a very snug and tight fit and we don't even need to use any clamps to uh, hold this in place. Next, we're going to have to remove this uh, air intake tube that goes to our throttle body. And then we need to find a way to block this. All right, now I'm lucky enough to have this uh, PVC cap that fits exactly inside this uh, throttle body. So this is gonna seal this pretty good, I'm sure. Oh yeah, that should withstand two PSI pressure, right? Now, if you don't have something like this, you can always put the, some rags around this or maybe even a piece of plastic, put it over this and then use this with the clamp here to put it over them and then tighten it down you might have a little bit of leak, but I mean, it should be fine. It should be enough to keep uh, two PSI of pressure inside your, your intake manifold. All right, next you want to cut a piece out of a cotton shirt or maybe a dirty rag even and throw most of it in the can. Then get yourself some mineral oil or baby oil if you have some and then put this over most of the rag. Just leave the top end uh, dry. Told you guys it's gonna, it was going to be crude. All right, next we get our lighter and light this up. Throw it in there. Get our air compressor ready. All right, gotta be quick. Connect our air compressor. Then, put this on. 
And then you gotta make sure you tap this down quick. Here's our smoke. It's not the strongest of smokes, but now we just connect this to our engine. There we go. And now we wait. All right, I think I see something from back there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm seeing some white smoke coming out of there. Let me get you guys a closer shot. All right, there we go. You guys see it? I think it's coming from our uh, lower intake manifold gasket back there. All right, that was a bit of a fail, I guess, but we got the job done though. I mean, the leak from back there, I believe it's from underneath the lower intake manifold gasket on the back of the engine block. And I say it was a fail because we only burned just a little bit of this uh, cloth. And actually the smoke we got was from the initial fire that we started. By the way, this thing gets really, really hot. I kind of burned myself. So wear gloves <laughs> if you're gonna be handling this. Um, but yeah, I mean, the smoke we got was only from the initial fire that we started with this. And then after that, I was hoping that it would keep burning, but the amount of air that was going in here wasn't sufficient enough to have a proper uh, smoke or, you know, to keep this burning and have enough smoke coming out of it at the same time. But again, it worked well enough to find our vacuum leak, so I guess it wasn't too bad. And when you think about it, you don't need a whole lot of smoke to find vacuum leaks. As long as you get some smoke under pressure going into your intake, you know, you should be able to find it unless it's uh, some huge leak on your intake, in which case you'll see it anyway. Now, as far as why do we have uh, lean fuel trims on both banks where it looks like it's just leaking from that bank? But actually, we're seeing the leak from this end. The leak might be, you know, on both sides leaking towards the, in the valley where our intake manifold is from underneath and then just uh, coming out from the rear seal of our valley where it meets top of the engine block but it's just coming out on this end. Or, you know, all things considered, our smoke machine, you know, might not have enough pressure or enough smoke to show us a leak on the other end as well. I'm gonna have to stop this ice cream truck here. Can never go wrong with some vanilla crunch. That's how you do it. Now something I should have mentioned in my previous video is that, you know, before you go tearing into this intake manifold, you want to cover your bases and make sure you check your uh, PCV valve. Make sure this hose, you know, you block this hose. I can't really pinch this hose because this is a plastic, not a rubber hose. Otherwise, you know, otherwise I would. But uh, next best thing would be to, to remove it from the, this end and block, block both sides and see whether your uh, fuel trims start improving. If they do, then you have a PCV valve that's stuck open at idle. Same thing with an EGR valve. If that thing is stuck open due to carbon buildup at idle, it's gonna pretty much be a vacuum leak. And these force come with this uh, DPFE sensor that would hopefully let us know if this thing was stuck open. And that's assuming this sensor is working properly. Now diagnosing EGR issues could get complicated depending on your car's make and model. And I'll put a link to a video I did a long time ago on the screen at the end of this video that you can check out. Now unfortunately we're not gonna get to do this repair because this car is being sold at an auction uh, hopefully in the next few days. But if I were to do this repair, what I would do is again, you know, check the EGR, PCV, uh, those vacuum lines, and then I would proceed to remove the upper intake manifold, further inspect the vacuum lines in the back of that. If I don't see anything obvious, then I would proceed to replace the upper and lower intake manifolds, and maybe even uh, clean the fuel injectors while we're at it. Now, before I wrap this up, I'm gonna recommend the YouTube channel to you guys. The YouTube channel is called the South Main Auto Repair, and the YouTuber's name is Erico. Now, that guy, he's very experienced, and he does a lot of diagnostics on uh, in, in his videos. You know, I don't really run into a whole lot of diagnostic issues because most of them are simple. And on the other hand, you know, I don't run a mechanic shop here. I'm an automotive wholesaler. I get the cars and fix them. They get shipped out to auctions and whatnot. And you know, I do it as a hobby uh, mostly. I mean, it's just something I'm interested in. I'm actually more interested in mechanical work than diagnostics, but watching uh, South Main Auto Repair is getting me interested in doing more diagnostics, that's for sure. So, you know, uh, hopefully we'll see more uh, diagnostic videos in the future on this channel as well. But check out his channel, uh, link in the description box. You probably learned a few things, because I have, that's for sure. Okay, that's it. If you like this video, do me a favor and share it. And also, you may want to consider checking out these other related videos, of which I put links to on this side of the screen that you can click on. There will also be link in, links in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.